Hello everybody, welcome to the third video in our AI jumping tutorials. In the last video, we created a jumping behavior with the smart links. And in this video, we're going to diversify and augment that behavior by using nav area classes and nav query filters. These can be used to help the AI find a preferred route or even avoid a route altogether when creating their path. Okay, let's begin. To start with this time, we're going to create a few extra platforms for our characters to be able to jump on to later on in the tutorial. This part of the video has been sped up a little bit, so it doesn't take so long to create these platforms. Now we're going to duplicate our character a few times and just preview their current behavior. And when we simulate, they all take a different route to get over there. Now just to illustrate what we're doing this time, I'm just going to have a quick look at the nav link. And we can see here in the simple link and smart link, they both have an area class. That's what we're going to make this time. So we're going to go into blueprint classes, we're going to search nav, and we're going to find the nav areas. There's several default ones there. And we're going to select nav area and create our own one. And we're going to name this one small jump underscore NA for nav area. Inside the blueprint, we've got a couple of values that we can mess with here. We've got a default cost and a fixed area entering cost. The default cost is how much it costs the AI to move in this area. And the fixed area cost is how much it costs to enter the area. We're going to make it completely free to use. We can also edit the draw color of our area. So any area of nav mesh that uses our nav area will be drawn in that color. We'll create another nav area now, and we'll name this one medium jump underscore NA. Just like the small jump, we'll make this free to use, and we'll give this a nice sort of amber color to it. We gave the small jump a green. And now we're going to create a nav area, which we will call high jump. So we'll have three nav areas, a small jump, a medium jump, and a high jump. And again, we'll make the high jumps free to use, and we'll give them a draw color red. Now we're going to create a nav query filter. This uses nav areas to help the pathfinding either find a preferred route or avoid a specific area. We're going to use it to help find or avoid specific jumps. So we're going to create our own one, which we'll call small jump query underscore QF. And we'll jump into here and have a look at its default variables. The part we're really interested in here is the area array. And this is the list of areas that it can navigate with. So we're going to add an area to this. We'll add the default area so we can navigate across any regular area of the nav mesh. We'll now add more of the default variables. So we'll add a nav area obstacle. Now we're going to add the nav area null. Now this is an area on the nav mesh where an AI shouldn't be able to travel to. So we're going to enable the is excluded flag on this. And now when it creates a path, it will avoid creating them in any area of the nav mesh that is a nav area null. We'll add our small jump area class to this. And then we'll add a medium jump area to this too. And finally, we're going to add a high jump area to our query filter. And we're going to exclude the high jump and the medium jump from this query filter. So this query filter can only navigate for default areas, obstacles, and our small jumps.
Here, we're just going to delete a few of these nav links to simplify the level a little bit. And now we'll preview the behavior. So I can still comfortably navigate over our nav links. Now we're going to get these two nav links and we're going to set the smart link class to our high jump area filter. We're going to go into our behavior tree and set the filter class on the move to node to our small jump query filter. Remember that the high jump is excluded from this query filter, so it's not going to be able to navigate with it. And that's exactly what we see. They can no longer make this jump. They are forced to stay on the default path. We can use this to exclude certain types of jumps from our navigating ability. We set it back to small jump. We can see our AI again tries to make these jumps. The behavior is a little different this time than the default one because these jumps are so cheap now to navigate on. It's good practice as well that when we're doing the get random reachable point in radius to find a point on the nav mesh, that we set these filter classes to be the same ones that we're moving to. So we're never going to try and get a point that we can't actually reach. Now we'll just remove a few of these characters from a level to simplify it a little bit again. Now we're going to rename some of the content in our content browser to reflect their behavior. We'll rename the character a small jump character. Our AI controller small jump BP. And we'll rename our behavior tree AI small jump BT for behavior tree too. We don't need to rename the blackboard as that's just storing the move to variable. It's not using any of our query filters or nav areas. We'll just make sure the AI is set up correctly in our character blueprint too. Now we'll duplicate our query filter, rename this medium jump query. And we'll jump into here and we will exclude the small jump and enable the medium jump. We'll duplicate this again and we'll rename it this time high jump query builder. And this time exclude the medium jump and enable the high jump. So now we've got three query filters, one for small jumps, one for medium jumps and one for high jumps. So now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our behavior tree. We'll do this twice as well. So we'll have a small jumping behavior tree, a medium jumping behavior tree, and a high jumping behavior tree. For each one of these, we'll make sure that the move to nodes are using their appropriate query filters. So we have a behavior tree that only uses the small jump query filter, a behavior tree that only uses the medium jump query filter, and a behavior tree that's now only going to use the high jump query filter. So they can only find those kinds of jumps to make. We're going to have to do the same in the character's AI controller too. So we're going to duplicate this and rename it medium jump BP or AI medium jump BP. And we'll change the query filters on the get random reachable point in radius to be the medium jump query filters. We're also going to change the behavior tree to use the correct behavior tree for this and the medium jump behavior tree. We'll have to do the same again now for the high jump too. So we'll have another duplicated AI controller, which we'll rename high jump and we'll set the query filters and the behavior tree in this. So we'll have three behavior trees, one for each R by query filters, three AIs, one for each of the query filters and behavior trees. And in a moment, we're going to have to duplicate that character as well. So we'll have three versions of the character, one for small jumps, one for medium jumps, and one for high jumps, as each character has their own AI. So here we go, we'll duplicate this and we'll rename him medium jump character. 
end of the character, we will find his AI. It's a bit difficult in this view, so we'll have to pull Blueprint Editor. And it's over here in the porn. Also, it's in a medium jump. And then we'll duplicate it and create one for the high jump too. And let's just set up his AI. Again, a bit hard in this viewport. So now we've got a character that can jump over small jumps, a character that can jump over medium jumps, and a character that can jump over high jumps. And we're just going to add a few extra pieces to this level again, so we can have some smaller jumps up these new, you know, this new bit of level geometry as well. And let's drop our new characters into the level two. So we'll drop a new small jump guy in here, a medium jump. And let's have a look at our nav areas in practice. We'll duplicate our nav links and we'll set one of these to medium jump with the nav area class. We're gonna leave the simple link well alone so that anyone can use the simple link. Now if we preview this, we can see both our characters navigating over their correct nav links. This is swap them around in positions and see how they behave. So they navigate across each other and then to the correct links again. So this is behavior we kind of want to see. We are behaving differently now. They're use, choosing to use different nav links. If we drop in a high jump character as well, we'll just duplicate one of these nav links again and make a massive jump for this guy. In fact, we'll drop in our own one and start again. So let's set this to high jump. And let's copy the start and end positions. And for this one, what we're going to do is we're also going to remove the simple link because you can't really navigate on that simple link anyways. It's not going on or off anything. It's just jumping straight over it. So we just have a smart link over the object. And if we simulate, all three choose their respective paths. And there it is again. So. There's three different versions of the characters and three different versions of the path that they can follow and they can't take each other's paths. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to move our target point to the top of this stack in our world. So this sits right on the top of it. So these guys have to navigate up here. And we're gonna put a few small jumps up this stack again we're going to speed up this part of the videos it's quite a long drawn out process but essentially we're just duplicating creating these nav links using the small jump area now if we preview this a small jumping character can start to navigate up these links here is approaching it and he's going to start climbing up but the medium jump and the high jump character can't navigate these links because they're not their classes and are trying to get as close to that target point as they can actually get, which is around the back of the stack here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of jumps for the medium guy. Then we'll drop in a couple of navigation links and we'll set these to medium jump. And if we preview this now, we can see the high jumping guy is going around the back of the stack again, but the small jumping guy is working his way up and medium jump is taking his medium links up to the stack. So the small jumping guy is making small steps and the medium one is taking the medium sized steps. Let's now drop in a high jumping link and preview this behavior. And the high jumping guy, this guy, is going straight for that high jumping link, getting right to the top. Small jump guy is getting up the small jumps. Medium jump guy is making his way up the medium jumps. 
Now let's duplicate a few more of these jumps around so we've got a few different methods of getting up the stack and off of the stack too, am I that? So we've got a few different paths to take up now. We'll duplicate a few of our characters too. So we can see this behavior. And now if we simulate, we can see all the guys rush across, few jump over that first obstacle, and then start to follow their respective lengths from the shorty path up to the top of the stack. So we got some nice variation there in our character's behavior, which is quite nice. We're just gonna grab that target point and pull it down onto the floor and watch all these guys jump down off this as well. And a few of them are taking their respective jumps, like the medium guy, made, one medium guy made a jump. The rest just chose to use the simple link from the default path and walk straight off of it. So we got some randomized behavior there as well, which is what we want to see. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope this has helped you again. And across all of these videos, we've now seen how to create jumping behavior using smart links and how to diversify it a little bit using nav area classes and query filters. Again, I hope this has helped you in your AI creation and in all your future projects. Thank you for watching.